So I don't know about you, but I'm pretty much a control freak. And what I kind of have found is that sometimes I spend my time and my energy trying to control the things that I can't control. These are things like other people's actions, their responses, the weather, the political climate, the comments that people make on my stuff. Really anything that doesn't originate directly from me. And I can't tell you the amount of time, energy, and frustration that I've wasted on that. That was until I learned what I'm going to talk to you guys about here today. We are going to talk about complete versus incomplete control in a way that you probably never thought of it before. I'm going to teach you an easy strategy to determine what fits under each category so that you can take back your control. Now, one of the things I've realized working with a lot of entrepreneurs and also having my own head voice is that it's easy to get overwhelmed and feel like you're not in control, especially on your entrepreneur journey. But all you parents out there, you know, it's the same there too. So being able to identify what we can control and what we can't control, but do so in a quick manner is what will help us really change the game forever. Now, how we got into this mess in the first place is as humans, we like to control everything, the expectations, the outcomes, the results. But really, when we're trying to control all of those things, especially things that we don't have complete control over, we end up wasting our time and energy and get super frustrated. And that never gets me to show up as the best version of myself in any area. So let's dive into a different strategy so we can first identify and then take that control back. Let's talk about, first off, the things that you can control. Now, in your business, these are things like your strategies, your message, who you hire, your branding, and really how you come across. These are also things like our time management and our daily activities. And the last part, which is often the hardest part of all, is our personal mindset, which includes our thoughts, our feelings, our reactions, and our attitude. Now, that is just a video in and of itself. It's kind of actually what I teach inside of our Life Coach Certification. But those are the things we have 100% complete control over. But what are the things that we don't have complete control over? Well, I could easily say like everything else that doesn't fit into that category, but let me give you some other ideas. These are things like market shifts, economic changes, opinions and actions of others, whether they're customers, clients, people watching you on YouTube, people listening to your podcast, and also those little humans we call kids. This also includes like global crises like COVID and so many other things that have kind of come into existence recently. Now, the truth is you don't want to put your head in the sand to all of those things that you can't control because just pretending like they don't exist is not helpful at all. But also spending extra time and energy there is going to get you to spin in circles like I did for such a long time. Instead, realizing they exist and then asking yourself, what part of this equation can I control is what truly gave me back my control. Because when you start to flip that, not only does it help you increase your productivity and efficiency, it helps your mental well-being, reduces your stress, and even enhances your clarity and your decision-making ability. Because you're not clouded with 8 million things in your mind, you know you just need to focus on the things you can control. So how do you let go of those things that you can't control? Here's a few strategies. Number one is embrace a proactive versus a reactive approach. Now I know sometimes in the moment we do react, but thinking about it in terms of how can I do this differently next time? How can I solve the problem in advance? So before this happens again, I actually have a solution so that when it does happen, I don't have to react. I can more take the time and respond. The second way is through mindfulness and meditation. Now, for me personally, as a life coach, I really like affirmations that are based off what we term our heart voice. And that is like finding the deep desires and why inside of you to help tap into as a resource to guide your mindset in the right direction before anything ever heads down the wrong road. And then lastly, and you knew I was going to talk about this, And that is establishing a support network, whether that's your inner circle, a mastermind, a coach, a mentor. It's finding help outside of yourself to help remind you of the things that you can control and bless and release all of the rest. So here's an actionable strategy that will help you employ all of those other things that we just talked about. So I want you to take a sheet of paper and I want you to write a line right down the center so there's a left and right side. At the top, I want you to write out either a specific situation or a specific goal that you have. On the left, I want you to write what you do not have complete control of. Once you write that sentence, and I'll give you an example in a second, I want you to pop over to the right and I want you to ask yourself, but what part of this situation do I have complete control of? And I want you to go back and forth as you go down this list and I want you to really be able to take it all in. So let me give you an example of how this worked for me recently. So I was recently invited to a leadership training for dads and that's where I really got to dive into this concept even further. And Jason, who was the trainer, set us up with a very specific situation where he said, you want to create an incredible legacy for you and for your family. What are some of the things that you have complete control over? And what are some of the things you have incomplete control over? So here's some of the things that I wrote down. Under incomplete control, I wrote down, 
I want to teach my kids valuable lessons that they'll be able to use when they get older, but I have no control over whether they accept those lessons or not. But what I do have complete control is the many different ways that I try and teach those lessons. I also don't have a control over how long I'm here on this planet, but what I do have control over is what I teach them with the time that I do have. What I don't have complete control of is who my kids hang out with the most. But what I do have control over is asking them questions about their circle of friends that will lead them down the path of deciding if these are the right friends for them to hang out with or not. You see how this works? It gives me back the power instead of making it feel like I have no power at all. Because the truth is, if I control what I can control, sometimes I can even control the things I didn't think I could. Now, there is one caveat to this, and that's anytime you're having this conversation with someone else, it could be your family, it could be your clients, or it could be your friends. If you're trying to help them through this situation, you have to make sure you create a safe environment so they can actually lean in, be willing and open to even have this conversation with you. So if you're someone who has a team or a family and you want to help them through what they have complete or incomplete control of, you need to be a master of developing psychological safety. And don't worry if you don't understand what that means, because I got you covered. Tap the screen to watch the next video. How leaders make people feel safe. I want to thank you for being here, for being willing to lean in and figure out what you can control. It is the best use of your time and energy. Thank you for what you do out there every single day and keep leading from the front.